The nightmare of many developers has come to an end. Creating form has just become enjoyable. Let's discover OpenForm, a free open source no-code advanced form builder. It includes tons of templates, conditional fields, full control on the logic and styling, and many integration options, including webhooks. Which means you can access your data and do anything you want with. Before diving into the platform overview, let's see the different options available to start using it. You can use OpenForm Cloud version starting at $16 a month if paid yearly, or install the open source version by following the Docker installation guide on their GitHub repository, or use a platform like ours, Elestio, to install it on the cloud of your choice while we take care of backups, updates, and maintenance for you. To install OpenForm on our platform, go to ls.io and click on Login. Then deploy my first service and search for OpenForm. Click on Select. Choose between the different cloud providers, region and service plan based on your need. I'll keep the default one and click on Next. Adjust your level of support. I will keep the free included one. And once you're ready, click on Create Service. Once the installation is finished, you receive an email telling you that your instance is ready. Follow the click here to get the password link. Click here to copy the password into your clipboard and follow the admin UI link. You arrive on the equivalent of OpenForm landing page, but it's not OpenForm website. This is your instance with your URL. So what you need to do is to go to login, enter your credentials. So your email address and paste the password from your clipboard and then click on login to continue. Currently we have no form available, so let's create a new one. And we have the choice between starting from a simple contact form or starting from a template. If we choose start from a template, let's make yes. Unfortunately, on the open source versions, you will have no templates found. They are only available on their website, on their cloud version, I guess. So you can follow the real link, the live link, Scroll down to the templates. Here you have the list of all the templates, so you can click on see all templates. And here are all the templates available. You won't be able to directly import them on your instance. So let's say, for example, we want one of the forms. So let's choose an industry. We'll take education forms and we want the IT training registration form template. You click on it and you have the preview of the template. You can see it's a simple one. So what we will do is just reproduce that template and you can see how easy it will be with OpenForm. So back to our instance, this time we choose start from a simple contact form. Before editing the different fields, let's change the default information about our forms. So let's change the title. We will copy the one from the template. We paste it here. Same process for the description. We paste it here and here you can see it's not just simple text, it's rich text. So you can, for example, put this text in bold, add links, add colors, a bit more dynamic than just a single text input. We can add tags to it, define if it's published directly or in draft or closed. But let's keep published by default and let's edit our field. So the first one is named here and on the template it was full name, email and phone number. OK, currently we need full name so we replace the field name here with full name we can choose if the field is hidden or not if it is required or if it is disabled you might not understand why we would need a disabled field but it's because later we'll see how we can make dynamic fields logic so we will enable it based on certain conditions but for the moment let's keep it simple customization is good let's jump to the second one it's email so we can keep it Maybe we can make it required as well. And the third one, it was the phone number. So you can either change the type directly to phone input or you can duplicate or let's just remove it and see how we add a block by ourselves. So here on the left, we have the form structure. We can reorder the fields, edit them or edit them by clicking here. Let's add our new block and we need a phone input. You can see automatically you have the country code available, which is quite useful. Based on the field type, you have different settings. So for example, you can say disabled countries and you say, I don't want people with number from Afghanistan. So you disable it and it won't appear in the list here. You can also choose which country will be the default one. So based on where you are, for example, I'm in Japan, I would select Japan. Now let's see the next field. So we have training course. 
And you can see it's not a drop down, but it's a select a value. So let's create our, where is it? Select input. We can rename it. It doesn't have to be the exact copy. So let's say it's program. On top of it, you need to define the all options. So it's one option per line. So let's say 3JS, React, View. Do you allow new respondent to create new options? You can select or not. I will disable it. And here it's a real drop down. But if you select that option, which is what is in the template, you have the options like a radio button. Perfect. We can also choose what is the value field by default. And because it's a drop down, we don't have to type it again, but we can choose one of the value from our values. And we can go deeper in the customization. For example, here our field width is full, so it's taking the full width we have available here. Let's say instead we want half width. What it means is if we have another field that is half width, like this one, for example, they are automatically taking half width, half width, so it will put them in two columns. Actually, that's not what I really want to do. So let's put it back to full and also full. We can enrich our field with some help. So let's say choose the program you want to join. It can be displayed below by default or above if you want a more classical approach. And let's add a last field, the resume. So it is a file input. We won't make it required or disabled. We'll keep it by default, just rename resume. And we are good. The preview looks correct. Before we dive into more advanced logic, we'll first publish this version. Just before, I didn't show you all the different type of inputs. So we have text, date, URL, phone. You have the signature inputs, but you can also have only display element. For example, a text block that you will put anywhere you want and can add some nice display information within your form. Let's remove it. On the left panel here, this is where we will publish and finish the settings of our form. So we can reorder with drag and drop our fields. I will put myself back here. We don't have the right column anymore. We can choose the style of our form. We don't have an infinite number of themes. You have the default one, which is the current one applied. You have simple, which is more squared. And you have a notion like form. Let's take the default one. We can choose if we want to be full width or centered, but we can also change the global aesthetic to add some branding. So let's upload a cover image. So I will just upload that gradient. And here it is on top of our form. We can also add the logo and we now have our logo in that bubble here. You also can choose if you want to force the dark mode, but me it's in auto and my computer is in light mode. You can change the color of buttons and input border. So currently it's blue. What we can do is to use this here to automatically pick a color from one of your color of your logo. Let's take the orange here and the button is automatically updated and the button and outlines of our fields. Then you have a bunch of options to hide the title here on top to remove open form branding below. So here powered by open form, uppercase input labels and the most important to add confetti on successful submission. You have a nice preview. Let's add it. Then we have different ways to get access to our answers. So either by email notifications, it depends on what you are building. If it's not important that you receive it in your mailbox, you just keep it disabled. Otherwise you can add the email address where you will receive it. I don't need it. So I will just disable it. You can also have Slack notifications, Discord, and Zapier integration. What we will use here is a webhook notification. So we simply enable it, trigger a webhook notification on form submission, and we need a webhook URL, so your backend endpoint. We will simply use webhook.site to see the data that we receive on it. So we copy the URL to our clipboard and paste it in the webhook URL. Then we can close it. And in addition to that, what you can do is to send a submission confirmation to the people that submit the form. So it will be based on the email field. So if you enable it, you are able to change the subject of the email, the content of the email to make it very personal. But we don't need it here. So let's disable this option. Then for the final action, 
you can change the text of the submit button here. So let's say register. You can make the submissions editable or not. We don't want it. We can choose if it will create a new record or if it will update a record if it match the email address. And then after submission, you have the choice between showing a success page, which is currently what we have, or to redirect the user to one of your success page on your website or to any link you want. Let's keep the default settings. You can add additional things such as form access. So if you want to restrict access to the form with a password to end the submission after a specific date, so you just publish it and you can forget about it and don't have to come back and disable the submissions. And let's say you want to offer something to 10 people directly. You can just limit the number of 10 submissions and it will automatically stop after. You have different settings to make it indexed by Google or to request a captcha. You can also edit if it is public in the SEO title, page description and add a thumbnail image. And on top of all that customization that we saw, you can inject custom code that will be happened in the head section of your form page. Here, what it means is you can do literally anything. You can edit the CSS, but you can also add JavaScript code that will run and impact your form logic or your form style. You have full access on your page with this injected code. Fine, let's publish our form and test it. Our form is created, we arrive on the submission page, but we don't have any submission yet, so let's open it. We have the nice branding, we can fill the different data, add an email address, add a phone number, choose between the different programs and add some file, but we want and it's not a required field. So let's hit register. We have the confetti, we have the success page, perfect. Now if we reload here, we have access to the submission that just been created. We can choose which column we want to display. Let's say we just want the full name and the email, and we only have access to this. We can export as a CSV. And if we open webhook.site, we can see that our webhook has been called with the different data from the form. So we know what form was done and the content of the submission with the different fields that were set. Back to the submission page, you have access to some analytics. So you can see how many times the form has been viewed and the submission. So you can compare how many times people submit the form and not just watch it. And you have also different options to embed it within your app or website. You can just choose the share link, which is what we had here, or embed it using an iframe. And the QR code is automatically generated with the link of your form. You also have advanced options to pre-fill the form with a custom URL or to embed it as a pop-up. Now let's see, in my opinion, the best feature of OpenForm. So let's go back to our form and let's edit here our resume field. Let's say we don't want it always, but only if a specific program has been chosen. So first let's edit the program. I move my head and let's say we have a new option, which is custom. And if it is custom, we will need a file. So let's say it's not a resume anymore. It is custom program. So by default, it will be hidden. So if you didn't choose custom program, you won't see it. But what we want here in the custom logic is to add an end condition. If the program, we add the condition that it is equal to custom, then what is the action is to show the block. So if we try it, if we choose custom, custom program appear. If it's another one, it disappear. And based on your use case, you might need to make it required. So let's say, for example, we want to require an answer. If it is a custom program, we need that input to be filled. Of course, it's a simple example, but you can add many operators and do some more advanced logic. So let's publish our update. And you can see that if you change the value of program, you have the file that is required. And if you hit register, it will tell you that the required fields are missing and custom program is part of those required fields. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering OpenForm with us and we'll give it a try. If you find our content useful, please hit the like button to make it more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming videos. In the meantime, you can continue your open source software journey with this video here.